Are you wondering how Kamala Harris's tax proposals could impact your finances? With the U.S. presidential election just around the corner, it's essential to understand where each candidate stands on major issues like taxes. Let's take a closer look at Kamala Harris's tax plan and explore how it could affect everyday Americans. With President Joe Biden stepping out of the race, Kamala Harris has taken center stage as the Democratic frontrunner. Despite being somewhat elusive in interviews, Harris has released a detailed tax plan that gives insight into her economic vision. Today, we'll break down her key proposals and what they mean for you. First up is her proposal to tax unrealized capital gains. This idea, originally floated by President Biden, would mean that individuals could be taxed on gains from investments even before they sell them. Not sure what unrealized capital gains are? Let me explain. Imagine you bought stock in a company for $300 and its value increased to $450. You'd have a $150 unrealized gain, profit you would only realize if you actually sold the stock. Under the current tax system, you only pay taxes on gains when they're realized, meaning when you sell the asset. However, under Harris's plan, you could be taxed on that $150 gain even if you don't sell your shares. This proposal targets the ultra-wealthy, specifically those with a net worth of over $100 million. But critics warn that this could set a precedent. While it may start with the wealthiest, there's concern that the threshold could eventually lower, potentially affecting middle-class families down the line. Taxing money you haven't technically made yet could be a slippery slope. Next, let's discuss corporate taxes. Kamala Harris is proposing to raise the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. While this might seem like a good way to boost government revenue, it could also make business owners rethink their investments. Small businesses in particular might feel the pinch, especially when combined with other rising costs. The goal of raising corporate taxes is to address the massive national debt, which has skyrocketed to over $35 trillion. Harris argues that corporations should contribute more to help reduce this deficit, but opponents claim that this could stifle business growth and job creation. Higher taxes on businesses often lead to reduced investments, which could slow down the economy as a whole. On a more positive note, Harris aligns with Donald Trump on eliminating taxes on tips for service workers. If you're a bartender, server, or work in hospitality, this policy could allow you to keep more of your hard-earned tips. Whether it's Harris or Trump who takes office, this would be a significant financial boost for millions of workers who rely on tips for their income. However, it's important to remember that this policy would still need to pass through Congress before becoming law. Another key proposal from Harris involves raising the long-term capital gains tax for high earners. Currently, those earning over $1 million annually pay a 20% tax on their long-term capital gains. Harris's plan would increase this to 28%, a substantial hike. While this is still lower than Biden's proposed rate of 39.6%, it marks a significant increase for those who make large profits from investments in stocks, real estate, and other assets. Despite these tax increases, Harris has included a significant benefit for small business owners by proposing an expansion of the startup expense deduction. Entrepreneurs currently get to deduct $5,000 in startup expenses, but Harris wants to raise this amount to $50,000. Starting a business often costs tens of thousands of dollars, so this expanded deduction could provide meaningful relief to new business owners. So, what does Kamala Harris's tax plan boil down to? She's advocating for higher taxes on the wealthy and corporations to help reduce the national deficit while offering some tax relief for service workers and entrepreneurs. Her policies aim to strike a balance between taxing the rich and supporting small businesses, but the long-term effects on the economy are still up for debate. What do you think? Are you on board with Kamala Harris's tax proposals, or are you concerned about the idea of taxing unrealized gains? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth analyses of the candidates' policies.